Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses religious duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me as always, Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Sheikhna, the last discussion we were talking about salah, um, and one of the conditions of salah is actually to face the Qibla. So, what are the rules concerning facing Qibla? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين قبلة is the position in which a believer in Islam and in Allah سبحانه وتعالى and overall the one who wants to practice عبادة such as the prayers to face that position and it is the Kaaba in the city of Mecca in Arabia. Now, for those who are in Mecca, they would face the Kaaba itself towards the Kaaba and they perform their prayers. For those who are outside the Kaaba in other countries, they would face again towards the Kaaba with the position that they can actually. Uh, we can actually say that they are pointing towards the Kaaba itself. So it's important that we, um, when we are praying, we are in the correct position of the Qibla. We know the Qibla and um, perform the Salah in the right direction. How do we face the Qibla? As in, you know, do we face it standing or is it sitting? Or is it when we're sleeping? How, how do we actually face the Qibla? Well, to face the Qibla um, in Salah, for those who are standing, they have to make sure that their chest, their face, their abdomen, um, their body parts are towards the Qibla. So when you stand to perform the Salah, um, you must make sure um, you're not standing uh, to the left side, of the Qibla or right side of the Qibla and pray exactly towards the Qibla itself. Okay. And you perform the Salah. With regard to those who are unable to stand and pray in the position of the seat sitting, they have to make sure first when they sit, their sole of the feet is on the ground. Um, and again, the chest, the abdomen, uh, the shoulders are all towards the Qibla. And while he's sitting, he does the, uh, the salah. So if the Qibla is this way, I'm not allowed to pray like this. Exactly. So my, exactly. my, my body is facing this way. Exactly. My, my, my face is facing towards the Qibla. That's not allowed. I should be with my shoulders, my chest facing forward. Exactly. Ascent home. And for the third group, those who um, can't really sit and pray in the position of lying down or sleeping. So first they have to... Uh, sleep on the right hand shoulder and their chest again and, and the body parts towards the Qibla okay. while they, they're lying down. If not, the left side and then again towards the Qibla as well. If not, uh, if they can only sleep on the back, then they have to make sure that their feet are towards the Qibla like the one who is muhtadar in the mm -hmm. death time when they position the mayyit yes. or the one who is almost to die towards the Qibla, from the feet. So the feet should be towards the Qibla. So these are So options. like the, the, the soles of the feet, because they're exactly, laying yeah. down. Exactly, okay. yes, The soles yes. of the feet should be facing Qibla. Mm -hmm. Asante. Sheikhna, how do we distinguish and find where the Qibla is? I mean, what instruments can we use? There are different instruments in, in order to use uh, for, to find the Qibla. Number one, you can ask other Muslim brothers, for example, who are around you. Uh, they will tell you, somebody who you would trust even from one person, if you trust that person, um, then you can ask them and you can rely on their, um, their honesty and um, pray the Salah. Otherwise, um, for those who want, intend to do the Salah and perform the, the, the prayers, and um, they can't actually find the Qibla, because the situation is when you fi can find the Qibla, that's fine. You ask people, uh, but if you can't find, you are in a city, Let's say you go to Spain, for example, you go to any European countries um, and you want to pray 
you arrived in a city and you don't know what the Qibla is, you look at the mosques, for example. If the mosque is, is let's say, the Qibla is towards this particular di direction, then you pray mm -hmm. towards that direction. You also you can check the graveyards of the Muslims. If they are towards the Qibla, then you pray towards the Qibla. So you actually look for the signs, any signs uh, which the Muslim use for the Qibla purpose then you can rely on it and, and, and take it. And um, if such the case is that you cannot identify the Qibla at all, I mean, in the first instance we, we mentioned that you can, you can find the, um, uh, the signs. You know, you do, you do your best to find the Qibla. And if you can't, let's say, you try to... Uh, pray to the position that you think mostly is the direction of the Qibla. So the most accurate to your knowledge. Exactly. Something so you, are, you, are, you to 90%, 90%. are you allowed to estimate? So for example, uh, we know uh, the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west. So if you look at the sun, where it is in the position of the day, we can tell roughly, oh, the sun's over there, that means west is this way, east is that way, north must be this way, south must be this way. Exactly. Like that you can calculate. That's, if you know the okay. positions, yes, if you know some geography, geography that's fine. Um, some people can actually use the sun to uh, point to the Qibla. Uh, that's fine. If you can do it, that's fine. Or sometimes uh, if the Qibla is towards the southeast or southeast, east or whatever south, it is. South, southeast, yes. Exactly, south, southeast, then you can still uh, rely on it and you pray towards that Qibla. Uh, it depends where you are. Are you in northern Europe, eastern mm -hmm, Europe? Obviously, yes. Uh, northern, Middle East, uh, southern Middle East and so forth. Depends where you are. You still can can rely on these positions if you know them roughly. But however, if things were unclear at all and you couldn't actually, yeah, I think the worst place is the underground stations because number one, when you go underground, you got to go around these spiral staircases. Uh, you can't use your phone to because there's no signal. Exactly. So you don't know which direction is north. Very difficult to find. Uh, uh, any form of direction when you're in the underground station. In that situation, what, what, what do we do? In such situation, if there's no time to wait, let's say uh, you're going to be in that position for two or three hours and then you go back home and you can pray and there's still sun uh, is shining, for example, for the Salat al-Dhuhr and Asr, for example. In this case, you wait and you go back home or nearest place or mosque and pray there. Otherwise, if you think you're going to be there for a couple of hours, more than the, the Salah time, or even a couple of days, then uh, the hukum is that um, the one should pray in four directions. Uh, the four directions. And um, so you, you, you pray each Salah in one direction. And then in such cases that, the, for example, the time is too short, I mean, it's only five minutes left to sunrise, for example, and you don't have the time to pray four times in four directions. In this case, one direction you choose, and you pray just one salah because of the uh, shortness of the time. Asante, Sheikh. Sheikh, now what happens if, I mean, at the moment it's very easy to find Qibla, and it's very easy to find Mecca because we live on planet Earth, and we know which direction it is in. But what happens if, for example, we're on the moon? If a Muslim is on the moon, for whatever reason, which direction does he face in to pray his salah? Well, inshallah, if the Muslims uh, were able to reach the moon with their own spaceship, for example, inshallah. Um, <laughs> they have to just face the earth itself. Okay. So from the spaceship, they can face the earth and they can pray in whatever position they are. Uh, either they the sitting position or standing, if they can pray in the standing position. They just face the earth itself and that is the qibla for them. MashaAllah. Inshallah, we'll be able to experience it one day, praying in the outer space, inshallah, Shaykhna. MashaAllah. <laughs> what about um, when we are traveling, especially on a plane or in a car, on the train? Um, a lot of our brothers and sisters, especially in the West, come across this uh, situation where the prayer time is, is getting less... Uh, the journeys are very long, an hour and a half, two hours at a time sometimes. Can we pray uh, on, on these transportations and do we have to face Qibla as well? In 
the time of travel and the, by the means of the travel, either it's a bus or train or aeroplane, if there is time left for you to, uh, when arriving to the destination, you can wait and then pray the salah uh, in your destination out of the, the transportation. So if you think you can arrive early, then you can actually wait and then you pray there. Otherwise, if the whole journey, let's say you're, you're taking an airplane from Canada to Europe or from Europe to Australia, and that will take at least seven, eight hours, ten hours journey. In this case, yes, you can pray in the airplane. Um, you find a place. Um, you have to face the qibla, of course. Yeah, you face the qibla. You pray towards um, the qibla. And all the um, conditions for the salah must be met. For example, stability. You must be stable. So if the plane is shaking or uh, changing direction, you have to make sure that you stand still and then uh, you keep quiet and then when the plane is in a stable position then you can actually resume continue. your prayer and okay. continue. Exactly. I sent Shaykhna. Shaykhna, in what situations uh, when it comes to Ahqam and when it comes to um, the Mukallif they have to face the Qibla? As in the Qibla is a prerequisite or a pre-criteria. For example, Salah or when um, slaughtering an animal? Well, the things that you need to face the Qibla with are the daily prayers, the wajib prayers for every day. Um, you have also Salat al Okay. for the doubts within the prayers. And um, also you have, for example, Qadha, Salat al Qadha, for example. Um, the parts which are forgotten, let's, let's say the sujda that you forgot to do, the, the one sujda, or the, the forgotten tashahud, for example. They all have to be faced, uh, the qibla. Um, mustahab prayers, for example, you have um, the jama'ah prayer, as we know, we all pray towards the qibla. Um, salat al-ayat. The Salat of the Signs, um, we calamities, see uh, calamities and so forth, okay, exactly. Yes. Um, so the eclipses. Exactly, Salat al-Amwat as well, okay. the, the deceased prayers, uh, Salat al-Amwat. And in, um, for example, um, for those who, let's say, other than the, the prayers, those who slaughter animals, they have to make sure that the animal is towards the Qibla when slaughtered. As well, in the time of the ihtidar, when, when the one is almost on the brink of passing away from this world, uh, you face him towards the qibla, the qibla uh -huh. as I've mentioned. Yeah, the, the soles of the feet. The soles of the feet towards the qibla, exactly. Um, also, the one who is buried should be also towards the qibla. You okay. face the, the, the deceased towards the qibla in the grave. Okay. That's Does important it matter well. where they are buried uh, as long as they're facing the Qibla? Or is it a situation where the head must be this side, the feet must be this side? No, it depends where they actually are buried. Uh, so if they're in the north or south, they have to face the Qibla wherever they are. Um, what about um, the Muharramat, Mustahabat, uh, Makru in regards to facing the Qibla? Well, as mentioned in some previous episodes about uh, that it's forbidden for the one to face the Qibla while being in the toilet yes. for relieving the oneself uh, in, in, in the bathroom um, that is haram some kind of disrespect towards the Qibla so the position must be changed from uh, the Qibla either the whole the unit should be changed or the person should um, face other than the Qibla so that's the haram part for the qibla that we shouldn't um, relieve ourselves in the bathroom towards the qibla. Um, the mustahab, now many things mustahab with regard to the qibla. Um, for example, in the time of the dua, you want okay. to read dua kumail, for example, dua nudba, any, any dua, or even if you want to just ask Allah for something, for some wealth, for some uh, prosperity from and anything. You face the Qibla, you say, Allahum, for example, or Zuqni, or Allah, sustain me with wealth and so forth. 
So it's better to use the Qibla. As well, when reading Quran, for example, you face the Qibla and you start to read the Quran, especially in the month of Ramadan, Ramadan that we uh, usually read, read Quran and we finish the Quran. Um, some ulama as well, when they used to read uh, and begin to revise and study the narrations of Ahl al-Bayt and the Prophet's uh, narrations, peace upon them all, they would face the Qibla, sit down and face the Qibla, and then they start to read the hadith. So that's another type of respect to the narrations of Ahl al-Bayt Also, when we do dhikr, you know, subhanAllah, astaghfirullah, and so forth, ta'qib uh, after the salah, you know, when tasbih to Zahra alayhi salam, towards the Qibla. Um, in some cases, um, when you do sajda shukr, you know, the sajda of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, which is by itself mustahab. Also, the ayat al sajda al wajiba, the ayat al azaim, the uh, four surah which has wajib sajda, yes, to be towards uh, the qibla, mustahab again. And uh, in overall, it's mustahab be towards the qibla while sitting. Um, in overall, as I mentioned, with regard to the wudu, to be at all times wudu. Same thing, if, if we can position ourselves towards the qibla, even let's say if I am at work and I've got uh, an office chair and table, I would face it towards the qibla if it's possible, mm -hmm. for example. Um, that is uh, good as well. With regard to the makruhat of the qibla, it is um, undesirable and makruh for the one to have the intercourse, uh, you know, the husband and the wife, not relations yeah. towards the qibla itself. Not it's makruh, it's not haram, it's makruh. Um, so they have to position themselves in a different direction than the qibla. Um, that's not haram, that's makruh. The haram is only with regard to the toilet, the toilet and, mm -hmm. and relieving of oneself. So, Shaykhna, if I'm not facing the Qibla, does that invalidate my prayer? Do I have to pray that again? Well, there are two scenarios that say about this issue. Uh, number one, that if I do not face the Qibla with purpose, with the intention of not praying towards the Qibla, but I just want to pray towards any other side. Uh, in this case, if it's uh, with purpose and intention of not, then the salah is battle, of course. And I have to repeat the salah, either in, in time or qada if it's outside of time. However, if the situation changes, and let's say I rented a new property house, or went to a place that I I, I thought that the Qibla is, is in this direction. Then I discovered that it was a, in a different direction. And there's a ru rule for that. Um, the hadith of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he says, مَا بَيْنَ الْمَشْرَقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ qibla." If I was ignorant about the position and the direction of the Qibla, or I forgot about it, or um, I wasn't aware of the position, or I was mistaken, you know, uh, the GPS didn't work, gave me the wrong direction, I prayed. If the, the praying in this situation of not, not knowing or mistaken or forgetting or being unaware of the qibla, qibla position, if I pray in this situation, if the pray was between uh, the east side and the west side of the musalli, of the prayer, then whatever is prayed within this area and boundary, he doesn't have to repeat the salah. So let's say if the qibla is was straight, as I'm sitting now, and it is actually, if, if I'm sitting now, the qibla is, is in front of me, but I prayed slightly to the right or slightly to the, to the left, and I never knew about it until the, somebody else came and informed me. I found out later on, for example. Uh, because it's just slightly to the left or slightly to the right, and I didn't know, then the salah is valid, so I don't have to repeat. But if it was uh, more than the, the east side or the west side, or it was actually opposite, so the qibla is this side and I'm praying the opposite side, the salah must be uh, redone and, and it's invalid. So you're saying, uh, wherever the qibla is, you're allowed probably 
uh, 90 degrees to the left, 90 degrees to the right of that. Uh, that's if you don't know 100% uh, where yes, it is. If you find out later on that actually it was in a totally different direction, you have to repeat the prayers again. Exactly. The hadith, the hadith says المغرب, so between uh, the east and the west side of the prayer. So uh, anything that you prayed, although it's not towards the Qibla itself, it was different than, than the Qibla side. But, but because you were unaware, you didn't know, um, you were mistaken with your calculations in terms of the Qibla direction, then the Salah is uh, accepted, valid. Otherwise, more than this, than this limit, you know, uh, as I've said, opposite side of the Qibla, then you have to repeat the Salah. Asan Sheikh, now thank you very much for that. And thank you to all the viewers for joining us on today's discussion on uh, facing the Qibla. If you have any questions in regards to Salah or any other Ahkam topics, please contact us on the details provided and inshallah the Sheikh will be able to answer them as soon as he can. Until next time, do your best to find the Qibla. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.